last lecture, we introduced ourselves to the concepts of the Fourier integral and the Fourier transform. Let us quickly recall what we did. We observed that an aperiodic function of time can be considered to be a periodic function with a period going to infinity. And we found that as a consequence, the function will have frequencies of all values extending from minus infinity to plus infinity, but then the amplitudes of the various frequency components will be vanishingly small, will in fact tend to zero. So we will not have any meaningful data if we take up, continue to take up the approach of evaluating the coefficients, Fourier coefficients as we, have, as we did in the case of a periodic function. So we took up an alternative approach we talked in terms of the coefficient density, which is the coefficient divided by the base frequency, F0, and the coefficient density turns out to be a meaningful concept in the sense that it does not vanish and it gives a relative idea of the different frequency component magnitudes. Coefficient density, we also call the Fourier transform, Fj omega. And Fj omega is in general a complex number, therefore it has got both magnitude and phase. So corresponding to each f of t, you have the Fourier transform, f of j omega. And both f of t and f of j omega are, can be thought of as two different windows through which you can look at a function. One is a time description, the other is a description in terms of frequency. Both give equivalent information about the same physical phenomenon. We are used to observe a, period, a, a function as a, as a sequence of values with respect to time. So a function of time comes more naturally for us to visualize a physical situation of this sort. But imagine that you have an instrument or a creature which have got sensors receptive to different frequencies, different frequency bands then that particular instrument will observe the phenomena as in terms of the relative strengths of different frequencies. That will be in terms of the, for example, like Fourier transform f of j omega. So let us now look at, once again, you, you have a function of time, f of t, and correspondingly, its Fourier transform f of j omega will have a magnitude f of j omega magnitude and a phase function phi of omega which is an odd function. So this is the magnitude spectrum and this is the phase spectrum. We also observed that since this, both the magnitude and phase are essentially functions which are called for coefficient densities, if you take a small band of frequencies, delta omega, centered around a particular omega, this section of the spectrum 
both the magnitude and phase together will tell us about the idea of the strength of the signal at this frequency omega. In fact, these two sections represent a function of time which can be written as f of j omega magnitude e to the power of j phi e to the power of j omega t. So, this is the time function which is identified by these two sections and spectrum. In other words, what we are saying is even though there is a small difference in the frequencies in this band, if we assume that this entire spectrum represents the frequency component at this point omega at the center of this band, the time function corresponding to that is g e to the power of j omega t and its magnitude is the Fourier coefficient times of course delta omega. We must also have delta omega because this is e f of j omega, I will write this again, f of j omega e to the power of j phi, this is the coefficient density, but since the coefficient density we are talking over a band delta omega, so it is delta omega over 2 pi because the density is in terms of the frequency e to the power of j omega t. So, this is the signal that is represented by these two sections. This is the strength of the signal, this is the coefficient and this is the time function. And if you take the limit of all such individual components over the frequency band just extending from minus infinity to plus infinity, this will add up to that is from minus infinity to plus infinity limit as delta omega tends to 0. If you take such all such functions, this will be 1 over 2 pi minus infinity to plus infinity f of j omega, where f of j omega now I am talking about combining f of j omega magnitude and e to the power of j phi together is a complex number f of j omega e to the power of j omega t d omega. That will be your f of t. So, f of t can be thought of as 1 over 2 pi f of j omega e to the power of j omega t t d omega. So, this is the Fourier integral and to get f of j omega from f of t, this is minus infinity plus infinity f of t e to the power of minus j omega t d t. So, these are the two relations which are important in the Fourier transform theory. <coughs> you can get f of j omega from f of t and f of t from f of j omega. We write these relations in more compact fashion in this manner. Fourier transform of f of t is indicated in this manner. A script f as a function of f of t, this will be the Fourier transform, this will be f of j omega. And to recover f t from f of j omega, we write this f of minus 1, this is the inverse Fourier transform, this will give me f of t. So, this is called the Fourier transform, that is your transform a function of f of t, function of time f t to get the Fourier transform f j omega. And what you have here is called the inverse Fourier transform. We would also like to indicate these transform relations occasionally in this fashion. f of t and f of j omega form a transform pair. So, we can indicate that functional relationship in this manner. f of t arrow heading to f of j omega, this means the in the forward direction it, you are doing the Fourier transform and in the reverse direction you are doing the inverse Fourier transform. So, as I mentioned f of t and f of j omega are uh, two alternate descriptions of the same phenomenon. And what we would like to do now is to find out the Fourier transforms for a few representative functions of time before we go on to a study of the properties of the Fourier transform. So, to get some physical <coughs> idea of how this f of j omega comes about for 
common time signals. Let us work out a few examples, typical Fourier transforms. of a few representative time signals. One, suppose we have f of t as e to the power of minus a t u t. I will call that one a, let us say. A, a real quantity, a real and a greater than zero. That is, I have taken an exponential a decaying exponential starting at time t equal 0. Ut is the unit step function. So, it will be 0 up to time t equal 0 for negative values of t, f of t is 0. It starts at 1 and then decays exponentially. So, this is e to the power of minus 8. Now, the Fourier transform for this using the <coughs> this formula that we had here will be f of j omega, you integrate this from minus infinity to plus infinity of f of t e to the power of minus a t u t dt. But since we know that f of t is 0 identically from t minus infinity to 0, I can start the integration from 0, go up to infinity. Strictly speaking, we should start from minus infinity to plus infinity, but from minus infinity to 0, f is 0. Therefore, I am starting the integration from 0. From 0 to infinity, the value of this function e to the, is e to the power of minus a t, and I have e to the power of minus j omega t dt. So, this will be e to the power of minus j omega plus a t that is what is to be integrated. So, you have in the denominator minus j omega plus a this should be evaluated between the limits 0 and infinity. Since we have taken a to be real number and minus k is a negative real number when you t goes to infinity, e to the power of minus a t becomes 0 and e to the power of j omega t is something which oscillates between 0 and 1, I mean its magnitude at least. Therefore, e to the power of minus a t becomes 0 at t equal infinity. Therefore, the upper limit this is 0. At the lower limit, it is 1 because when t equals 0, this exponent becomes 1. Therefore, the result is this will be 1 over j omega plus a. So, e to the power of minus a t u t has a Fourier transform which is 1 over j omega plus a. So, how does its spectrum look like? Yes, so, f j omega equals 1 over j omega plus a. So, the magnitude spectrum will be f magnitude. 1 over square root of a square plus omega square, right. Therefore, it will be something like this. And the phase spectrum as a function of this all at a function of frequency. When omega goes to a very large positive value, the phase of this, the angle of this complex number becomes minus 90 degrees. That means it will go to asymptotically minus pi upon 2. And because the phase spectrum is an odd function of the omega, so it reaches plus pi upon 2 in the positive direction. So, that is what it is. So, this is the angle spectrum or phase spectrum, this is the magnitude spectrum. Now, even though we said that an aperiodic function has 
zero amplitude signals at all frequencies, we still from the coefficient density we can see that the, the components of the signal at near about DC are stronger than the component of the signals at some other frequency. So, the spectrum gives us an idea of the frequencies at which the density is concentrated in this signal, the energy density is concentrated in the signal. Because the components are more dense here than here. So, you can see the relative proportions of the different frequency components that go to build up the signal in terms of the Fourier uh, transform magnitude, which is really the coefficient density. So, even though coefficients are all 0, the coefficient density gives us a measure of the strength of the signal, strength of the signal at different frequencies. So, let us now continue this. Now, I purposely put this 1a e to the power of minus 80 a real and a greater than 0 because I wanted to extend this idea and say that this particular formula that we had, e, f of t has a Fourier transform 1 over j omega plus a will be valid even if a is a complex number. So, f of t suppose is e to the power of minus z t, where z is complex. Z let us say is a plus j b. And a is a real number greater than 0. Then the Fourier transform for that can be shown to be 1 over j omega plus z, which is 1 over j omega plus a plus j. So, this formula that e to the power of minus a t u t, here also you must have u t has this Fourier transform 1 over j omega plus a will be valid even if instead of a you have a complex number. The only requirement is that the real part of this complex number must be negative because minus z that is if, if minus z is the coefficient of t then the real part of that minus z must be greater than uh, real part of minus z must be negative or the real part of z must be greater than 0. The reason is if you had an exponentially rising signal like this, for example, if you have instead of this being negative, suppose it is exponentially rising signal, then this integral will not convert. This integral when uh, t becomes larger will not be will not convert. Therefore, you must have an exponentially decaying signal, then only it will convert at t equals y infinity. That is the reason why we had this restriction. Now, let us work out another example. Now, let us take a second function of time, a pulse function which is quite common and appears quite frequently in Fourier transform theory. So, we have a pulse of width d units amplitude a. So, this is f of t. So, f j omega will be from minus infinity to plus infinity of f of t e to the power of minus j omega t dt. This is the standard form. In our case, this function of time lasts only from minus d upon 2 to plus d upon 2. Therefore, this can be written as minus d upon 2 to plus d upon 2 and in this interval f of t equals a. So, a e to the power of j minus j omega t dt. And that will be a e to the power of minus j omega t divided by minus j omega evaluated between the two limits minus d upon 2 to plus d upon 2. And this can be shown, you can work this out and this can be shown to be a d sin omega d upon 2 divided by omega d upon 2. That is the Fourier transform for that. So, this is at the form sin theta by theta type of variation. So, the spectrum for that f of j omega 
can be plotted in this fashion. like this, where this at, at the DC, the Fourier transform will be having a value AD, because you recall that sin theta by theta will, have, will have a value equal to 1 when theta equal 0, so this will be AD. And then it oscillates, but with diminishing amplitude. Now when does the first 0 occur? First 0 occurs when sin omega d upon 2 is 0, that is omega d upon 2 equals pi. Therefore, the first 0 occurs when omega equals 2 pi upon d. In fact, this is the spectrum which we plotted yesterday in the last class when we talked about the evolution of the Fourier coefficient density starting from a periodic pulse strain. This is exactly the type of spectrum that we plotted. Now, since f of j omega happens to be real, I do not plot the magnitude spectrum and phase spectrum separately, because f of j omega is real, it is either positive or negative, so I can combine both the phase and magnitude information into one plot like this. However, if you wish, you can plot the magnitude spectrum separately like this, this is f of j omega magnitude and the phase spectrum will be, whenever this is negative, you can say that is minus pi upon 2, minus pi. So, this minus pi and then you can write this as plus pi. So, this can be considered to be the phase and that could be the magnitude. So, this is an alternative way of depicting the spectrum both phase and magnitude, but when the Fourier transform is, is real, there is no point in doing this separately. We may as well exhibit the entire f of j omega being a real function of time, real function of omega in one plot like this. Now, let us have a little bit of uh, uh, diversion here. We know that sin theta by theta curve, which occurs frequently in Fourier transform theory, will be like this. This is 1, this is pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, this is minus pi, minus 2 pi, etc. Now, there is another function which is called sinc theta or sinc x. Sinc x equals defined as sin pi x over pi x. This is in the literature, the sinc x is a term, is a function that is defined as sin pi x over sin pi x. Therefore, if you plot sinc x as versus x, it will be similar to this because when x is 0, both the numerator and denominator will be sin 0 by 0 type of thing. So, it will be 1 and it will have oscillations, but the 0 occurs whenever sin pi x is 0. That means, for my integral values of when x is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, the sin pi x become 0. That means, the curve will be something like similar to that, but what we have now here is this will be 1, this will be 2, this will be 3, this will be 4, this is a minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, like that. So, occasionally people prefer to use the sinc function instead of sin theta over theta, you can have a compact expression sinc x, which is will be the value of sinc x will as a function of x will vary in this fashion. So, we can write this if you like as a d sin omega d over 2 pi times 2 pi over, oh, I am sorry, sin omega d upon 2 oh, pi times pi, right, times pi divided by omega d upon 2 pi times pi. So, you can write this therefore as a d up times 
sink omega d upon two pi. So, a d sin omega d upon two by omega d upon two can be written as a d sink omega d upon two pi. And the sink function vanishes at integral values of the argument when x equals 1, 2, 3, 4. So, at what values of omega will it will become 0, 2 pi upon d, 4 pi upon d and so on and so forth, 2 pi upon d, 4 pi upon d, 6 pi upon d, etc. So, this is an alternative way of writing this. So, this function, this pulse function sometimes called a gate function because it has a non-zero value only between these two limits, a rectangular pulse function has this Fourier transform A d sinc omega d upon 2 pi. The sinc function tries to normalize the values in a nice way because you are now having integral values of x. And this will become evident now if I take a second example where you normalize the pulse so that you have unit amplitude and unit duration. That means this is minus half, this is half, this is t and a equals 1. This is f of t. So, the Fourier transform for that, if you go back to your old formula, a d sin omega d upon 2 by omega d upon 2, a happens to be 1, d happens to be 1. So, a d is 1 sin omega d is 1, this is a is 1. So, omega d upon 2, d is 1, therefore, this is omega upon 2 divided by omega upon 2, which if you like to put this in terms of frequency, this is sin pi f, omega being 2 pi f, this is sin pi f, therefore, this is And this is indeed sinc f. So, consequently, a pulse normalized to have unit amplitude and unit width will have a Fourier spectrum, which is given by sinc f. That means, if you plot the frequency f of j omega, but in terms now f of the frequency and if you graduate the x axis in terms of frequency, you will have this is 1, f is 1, 2, 3, minus 1. So, uh, what this does is sync function only tries to normalize things. If you have a normalized pulse unit amplitude unit width, then the Fourier spectrum will have will be like this unit height and going to zeros at 1, 2, 3 cycles per second. Okay. So, this is just uh, a special case of this because uh, once you normalize you have a, a, a sink function which is surprisingly a very simple function. See, Let us now work out a third example. You recall that when you had a periodic impulse strain. In the case of Fourier series, we found that the, all Fourier coefficients are the same magnitude. So, let us now take an impulse and see just one single impulse. This is of course, a periodic and see what its Fourier transform would look like. So, f of t is taken to be a delta function. So, you have a unit delta sitting at t equals 0. That is the Fourier that is a time function. The Fourier transform for that f of j omega is minus infinity to plus infinity. The function of time is delta t e to the power of minus j omega t dt. And since we have a delta function in the integrand, naturally the value will be the value of e to the power of minus j omega t at t equals 0 that is equal to 1. So, we have a very nice and compact result that f of j omega equals 1, which means the Fourier spectrum that. So, you have an impulse 
you have a Fourier spectrum which is flat. So we can say now the, this, this particular pair of transforms this delta t has a Fourier transform which is equal to 1. That means the coefficient density at all frequencies from ranging from minus infinity to plus infinity equals 1. Very nice and useful result. Let us take now a more complicated example. e to the power of a t cos omega c t u t. That means the time function would be something like this, which is a, an oscillating a sinusoid, but with decaying amplitude. Now, this can be written as one half of e to the power of minus a t, e to the power of j omega c t plus e to the power of minus j omega c t u t, which is one half of e to the power of minus a plus j omega c t plus e to the power of minus a minus j omega c. So, this decaying, exponentially decaying sinusoid can be thought of as two exponential functions of this type. And in the very first example, we observed that e to the power of minus a plus j b t can also have the same type of Fourier transform as when you had e to the power of minus a t 1 over j omega plus a instead of 1 over j omega plus a, you have 1 over j omega plus a plus j omega c in this case. So, the Fourier transform for this will be half of 1 over Fourier transform for this particular function. Of course, this will also have u t because that, that continues j omega plus a plus j omega c. That is for the first function. The second function you will have 1 over j omega plus a minus j omega c. And these two can be combined and together you have an expression which looks like this j omega plus a over j omega plus a whole squared plus omega c. Likewise, you can plot the spectrum and then you will find that around omega c you have some kind of peaks, but we do not do that. Similarly, e to the power of minus a t sin omega c t u t can be shown to have a Fourier transform which is equal to omega, omega c over j omega plus c whole squared. plus omega c c square. Right. And the last example, if I have a function like this, a t upon 2 minus j upon 2, this is f of t. So, it is a, a pulse in the form of a triangle lasting from minus j upon 2 to plus j upon 2, it can be shown that this will have a Fourier transform, which is equal to a d upon 2 sin omega d upon 4 by omega d upon 4 squared. So, this is something like sin theta by theta type of uh, arrangement, but squared. That means, the decay is faster. So, the spectrum for this would be like this and this I will leave it to you for you as an exercise to show. Now, all the functions that we have taken so far are nice well behaved functions which have the property that 
all functions considered so far considered so far satisfy the relation from minus infinity to plus infinity f of t d t converges. That means, the, the magnitude of the function is integrable from minus infinity to plus infinity. That is why we have an exponentially decaying function, an exponentially decaying sinusoid here a pulse which lasts for a finite amount of time a, either in a, a rectangular pulse or a triangular pulse, an impulse which can be integrated that is equal to 1. So, all such functions have we have considered nice properties like this. This excludes this property excludes some desirable functions for which we should like to find Fourier transform. For example, u of t plus from 0 to infinity sin omega c t u t a sinusoid cos omega c t u t functions like this are important and we come across them quite commonly. But in the classical sense these functions do not satisfy this property therefore, we do not find the Fourier transforms for this not yet anyway. In the classical Fourier transform theory, these functions were excluded from the scope. But now that impulse functions have become a matter of common usage, once we have impulse functions, we should be able to find out the Fourier transforms of these functions as well, which we will do a little later. The mathematical justification for such usage comes from what is called the distribution theory which has sanctified the use of impulse functions and the related mathematics. We will not however, go into that, but nevertheless we will assume certain relations which are, which are sanctioned by the theory of distributions and use that those results to find out the Fourier transforms of such functions as well a little later. But before that we would like to have a closer look at some of the properties of the Fourier transforms in order for us to get some familiarity with their characteristics before we move on to finding out the Fourier transforms of special functions of this type. So, what we would now like to do is discuss the properties of Fourier transforms. These properties will run somewhat parallel to the properties we discussed when we talked about the Fourier series. After all, Fourier integral and Fourier series are related to each other. Therefore, it is natural for us to talk about properties which are similar to what we discussed in the case of the Fourier series. So, if f of t is even, then it means that f of j omega is real. So, when you substitute j omega in the Fourier transform, it turns out to be real. Example, what we have seen this pulse this is an even function and then we found that f of j omega is real. There is no j term in the f of j omega. If f of t is odd, then it turns out that f of j omega will be imaginary. There is a a j term sitting outside. We will take just give an example which I will not however, derive that uh, let me write this this is a this is d we know this is a d sin omega d upon 2 divided by omega d upon 2 because I am repeating this again and again because this comes so frequently that it is better to remember that. Now, suppose I have a function like this. a 
d upon 2 minus d upon 2. This is certainly an odd function. You have a pulse of value a lasting from 0 to d upon 2 and minus a lasting from minus d upon 2 to a. Its Fourier transform turns out to be minus j a d sin squared omega d upon 4 divided by omega d upon 4. So, you observe that this is immediately a j, sign, a j sign attached to it. So, it is purely imaginary. The proof of this is straightforward. If you write the expression for f of j omega as minus infinity to plus infinity of f of t cos omega t dt minus j times minus infinity to plus infinity of f of t sin omega t dt. We recognize that e to the power of j omega t is cos omega t minus j sin omega t. So, we split up the defining integral for the Fourier transform into two parts like this. Now, if you call this integral i 1 and call this integral i 2, then we notice that if f of t is even, the product f t cos omega t is also even. Therefore, we are integrating as far as i 1 is concerned between two symmetrical limits. So, whatever sequence of values this integrand takes from minus infinity to 0, it takes from infinity to 0 as well. Therefore, the integral i 1 will be twice the value of the integral from 0 to infinity. On the other hand, i 2 involves f t times sin omega t. Therefore, that is an odd function of time and we are integrating between symmetrical limits. Therefore, the value of the integral from minus infinity to 0 will be exactly the negative of the integral from 0 to infinity. So, as a consequence, i 2 is 0 if f of t is even. Similar arguments will show that if f of t is odd, f of t sin omega t is even. Therefore, the second integral will be non-zero, but the first integral which involves f of t cos omega t, that turns out to be the integrand is odd. Therefore, if f of t is odd, f of t cos omega t is odd and you are integrating between symmetrical limits. Therefore, i 1 will be 0 if f of t is odd. So, we have the situation that if f of t is even, then the first second integral vanishes and the first integral i 1 is real. Therefore, f of j omega itself is going to be real. On the other hand, if f of t is odd, the first integral vanishes and i 2 remains, but i 2 is preceded by a j. Therefore, f of j omega will be purely imaginary. Let us now discuss another property of the Fourier transforms. Translation in time. If f t has Fourier transform f j omega, then f of t minus d, that means you delay the signal to by some amount then this turns out to be f j omega e to the power of minus j omega. This is a, a very useful result. If you delay this time signal by d units, the Fourier transform gets multiplied by e to the power of minus j omega d. It means the magnitude of this being equal to 1, the Fourier transform magnitude will remain the same, but the phase will be disturbed by an amount minus omega d very similar to what we had in the case of CN coefficients in the Fourier series. The proof is quite straightforward. To find the Fourier transform of f of t minus d, all you have to do is from minus infinity to plus infinity, f of t minus d e to the power of minus j omega t d t. This is the defining relationship for the Fourier transform of f of t minus d. Now, the what we have to do further is quite evident for you. All you have to do is bring it, we know that minus infinity to plus infinity of f of t e to the power of minus j omega t dt is f of j omega, capital F of j omega, from this. Therefore, we have to bring this into that form. So, all you have to do is put t minus d as x 
then f of x e to the power of minus j omega t plus instead of t, t minus d is x, therefore t is equal to d plus x and then dx you get and then you have e to the power of minus j omega d term coming outside, then you will have minus infinity to plus infinity of f of x e to the power of minus j omega x dx which is indeed f of j omega. So it can be shown that this is equal to f of j omega e to the power of minus j omega d. Very, very, very useful result, extremely useful result. As an example, simple example I will work out. Suppose I have a delta function here of unit magnitude sitting at time t equals 2. That means this is delta t minus 2. And we know the Fourier transform of delta t is 1. The Fourier transform of this is e to the power of minus j 2 omega t, 1, 2 omega. Because you have to multiply the Fourier transform of delta t is 1, you are, you are multiplying this by j minus e to the power of minus j omega d. The delay is 2 seconds, therefore e to the power of minus j 2 omega. We will work out some more examples in the next lecture, but before that let us now summarize what we have done today. So in this lecture, we started with a review of the Fourier transform defining integral and the inverse Fourier transform. Then we constructed the Fourier transforms of a few typical time functions. Specifically, these are the impulse function, the rectangular pulse function, the exponentially decaying sinusoidal function, a triangular pulse function and we observed that the, if the Fourier transform turns out to be either is real, turns out to be real, then there is no necessity for us to plot the magnitude spectrum and the phase spectrum separately because the entire function is real we can exhibit this by means of one single spectrum which represents the value of f of j omega. We also introduce ourselves to a new function sinc x which is defined as sin pi x over pi x. Sinc x has the value 1 at x equal 0 and vanishes when x takes integral values like 1, 2, 3, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, etc. So this new function is helpful in finding, in uh, depicting the Fourier transforms of pulse functions. Then we took up for study some important properties of the Fourier transforms. The first property we studied is that if f of t is even, then f of j omega is real, and if f of t is odd, then f j omega is purely imaginary. So we also saw that, uh, we also mentioned earlier that if f of j omega is real, then the magnitude spectrum and phase spectrum need not be exhibited separately. They can be exhibited by one spectrum which gives both the magnitude and phase of course will be either 0 or 180. Same thing can be done if the spectrum is purely imaginary. In that case, we plot f of j omega by j. By j. That means the imaginary part of f of j omega is, can be plotted by means of one spectrum and because the real part is 0, we can also do that extend this principle of having only one spectrum even if f of j omega is imaginary by keeping at the back of mind that whatever values which we plot on the spectrum are purely imaginary quantities. The second important property that we studied was that if the function f of t is delayed by tau seconds then the Fourier spectrum gets modified, the f of j omega gets multiplied by e to the power of minus j omega tau. That means the new function will have the same magnitude spectrum as the earlier function f of t, but the phase will be modified. This is not surprising because we saw a similar result in the case of the Fourier series where the Cn coefficients, the magnitude will remain undisturbed if the periodic, periodic function is delayed by a certain amount of time, say tau seconds. Only the phase will get modified. After all, f of j omega is closely related to the Cn coefficients, therefore we have a similar result here also. We will stop at this point and continue our discussion of the properties of the Fourier transforms in our next lecture.